Yes, something that is similar, and I'm, I'm going to be bringing you to similarities in quantum physics as well as astrophysics, the universe as well as the subatomic smallest particles that exist and show you similarities of reality. And um, right now we want to discuss dark, dark energy, let's put an E, because E equals MC squared, uh, and uh, matter, uh, dark energy and dark matter. Now these are in astrophysics. This is when you look through, for example, a, a, a big, very large telescope, you see a bunch of stars and everything, but the stars are just specks in relationship to a huge amount of unseen whatever. We call it empty space. However, scientists have come to a conclusion that there is something out there. No, not aliens. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about at least. But they, they use the term dark energy and dark matter. And uh, these, these are just terms that they came up with. Trust me, a whole lot of stuff in physics is just terms that they, come, they just decided that's, you know, uh, what they would call it. For example, quarks and gluons. Quarks and gluons is that what's, what makes things stick, gluon. It's like, wow, this is so, you know. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. Dark energy and dark matter. And um, several, uh, and this, this, is, this has some similarities to bosons and fermions on the quantum level, but we're talking in the astral level. Um, they discovered, scientists, astrophysicists, and cosmologists, not cosmetologists, but cosmologists. <laughs> it's, it's different. It's very different. One fixes your hair. And the other. The other one fixes a big telescope on the heavens. Uh, they discovered that the universe was expanding. And I remember the first time I ever heard that, I went, what? The universe is expanding. OK. Um, and from uh, their ability to determine how far stars are, galaxies, and all this is away. I'll, I'll just tell you something you probably already know, but the light that we're getting from the stars now is not light that just came from it. It's light that came from these stars, you know, in some case, cases billions of years ago. Light travels at an incredible speed. In fact, light speed is considered the speed limit. That nothing can actually go faster than light speed. Uh, and uh, so, but, but though it's traveling incredibly fast, when you clock light speed, which is always the same no matter what, and you calculate how far those stars are, you realize that the light that we are just now receiving was let loose you know, a billion years ago or whatever. Do you understand that? I mean, I'm sure most of you do, but the idea being that from that now, they can determine if they can see past that, if they can see something, that the light is uh, emitting here, and they have other ways of testing this, but that, the, that at a certain juncture, and I'll read some things, at a certain juncture in time, Things were static up to this certain juncture, and then at a certain juncture, everything started, I'll use this, this term, started running away from itself. 
the galaxies literally started going away from one another and expanding. Well, um, they thought that that was due to the galaxies themselves. Just, you know, you could say the hurtling force of the Big Bang or something. I'm just, you know. Uh, but they can, they can prove that at a certain juncture these things started happening. That before that, there was, it was sort of a family of galaxies and constellations and what have but then it started expanding. Well, then they, they were shocked to find out a certain thing. And, and, and I, the thing I'm going to tell you now is common physics, but I don't know how common it is to the average person. But it is well understood, has been since Einstein. And he was the one who actually came up with the thought. And that is that that out there, that is not, what you don't see is not just um, empty space. That there is what's called space-time, and it's not space and time. It is space-time. Like I said, maybe you don't know this, but it's been around for, you know, almost, what, 100 years or whatever. Um, and Einstein proved that Things are not just held in place by gravity. For example, the uh, planets going around the sun are not just held in place by a constant tug of gravity alone, that in fact there is a greater force, and that is that space-time is like a fabric in space and that it's malleable or movable like a bed sheet or something like that, and that once gravity has, say, the Earth going around, that it literally forms a rut in space-time, and it's running on that rut. Okay? And that the fabric of space, this is where, you, you know, you've heard of um, um, uh, what is it? Um, wormholes. Worm, you've heard of wormholes. And wormholes, if you, you're into science fiction, you know that it is a shortcut to the other side of the galaxy or the other, another uh, constellation, Andromeda, or, you know, which is the closest constellation that we have, and, and all this kind of stuff. And that, that, it, that um, that's, that's all considered science fiction. But Einstein proved a bunch of this stuff. He literally proved it. And that, that space-time can be folded, and with that folding, you can bring it up close, to, and then if you can get a wormhole through that, you can actually cross great distances. Okay. Again, you know, when it comes to the scriptures, I tell you, search the scriptures, I'm telling you, you can look up any physics book. All of this stuff is understood. It is not far-fetched, weird stuff. This is common knowledge, okay? Um, and, and my point of a wormhole would be that actual space-time is malleable. Therefore, a hole could be made. But the point being that it's, it's moldable and it's like a fabric that adjusts based on gravity. And once gravity has through, through its reaction on some matter, meaning a planet or an asteroid or something like that. Once it has reacted, uh, once once the the matter, the object has reacted to gravity, space time begins to fold around it and begin to, uh, for lack of a better way, make a rut. Anyway, I say all that not to give you physics, but to help talk about some things that I want to talk about, but I have to set it up a little bit. When they started noticing these galaxies fleeing from one another, in other words, uh, the universe is expanding. Now, this is my thought, 
maybe the universe was always really, really big and dark and just the light from, if you will, the Big Bang is spreading into an area that it never was before. You understand what I mean? Then I mean the universe could be like really, really big, but there's no light there yet because it hasn't spread that far. You following me? And I haven't heard anybody say that actually in my books, but that's, you know. Uh, but what they, what they started noticing when they were doing measurements was this galaxy, they're all spreading, you know. But they found out by measuring after a period of time and everything that they're all going at the same pace of whatever pace they had. They're moving at that same pace. Uh, let me give you an example of that. Let's see. Um, Matt, why don't you come up here <clears throat> just for a second. This is my... Uh, little bracelet, buckle your bod, it's my buckle up thing, but I drew some little dots on it here representing uh, different galaxies, okay? Now, instead of drawing, putting these as individual galaxies moving, I put it on the back of a fabric. Are you with me? It, the rubber band is the fabric. That's, there's it's as if they're attached. Okay. If you will, like, put your finger underneath that and just hold that like that. And if you let go and pop me, I'm from the cliff and I'll pop you back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Now, here's, right here, have you got your cameras on this? Uh, right there is where the universe was at a certain juncture. And these dots each represent a galaxy. Okay. Instead of them moving, because everything is actually moving actually at the same exact rate, you see what I'm doing? They are uh, stretching across as if they're not moving, but they're all sitting on something, and that's moving. You see what I'm saying? I mean, at least you see what I'm saying. This is, this is the best example I can come up with. But, but I mean, it, it, it shows. I mean, there, if it was, this one was this far apart and this one was a little closer and that one was whatever, you know, real close, then as you stretch this, this one wouldn't, the one closest, yeah, there's one right there. If it was actually, see how close it is? And when I'm stretching, this, is, this end over here is really stretching further. Do you see how it's doing? And this one isn't stretching as much. But if you, if you calculate the amount, even though they're different things, the amount of distance is exactly the same. As if they're on a fabric that's stretching instead of them moving at a certain speed and whatever. All right, that, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by all that in just a second. Um, scientists believe that the expansion of the universe is due to this substance called dark energy. They can't see it. They have absolutely no way of proving it exists based on the substance of it. But um, uh, just by studying gravity on our Earth and our solar system, uh, you realize that gravity has an incredible pull on different things and that there are like magnetism, remember how we use the magnet to pull in things or to chase things, you can chase it if you've got the negative side, um, that there are invisible forces at work. And physicists have learned, may Christians learn, that Things are not just happening. You don't just look at the material world and think that that's the answer, but there are invisible forces at work that are bringing certain things about, okay? We discussed that as to how they discovered Neptune because Uranus as a planet was acting weird at a certain juncture in its orbit and they said, this isn't even right. This isn't correct. This can't be. This is against the laws of gravity for this planet to act this way. 
And then two physicists came up with an idea and said, I bet you there's another planet out there that it is reacting to when it gets close to it. And so they looked and looked and they discovered Neptune. The point being, there are invisible forces at work and in the Lord there are invisible forces that we, and that's the whole point of this, reality is beyond the scene, to be, to, to see beyond the natural, to see beyond just the events and to know the Lord based on deeper principle than just religion. You know, I hope you understand what I mean by that, just rules and commandments and, you know, uh, ethics. Ethics. Our God is more than a God of ethics. He's a God of nature, and he imparts that nature to us. So um, uh, <clears throat> you look out in space, <clears throat> and, and they have, and they look out in space, and they go, you know, there is a lot of stars out there, <clears throat> gases, stuff like that. But from what we're seeing, that, that when we look at this, we see that all of this matter, all of these objects, all of these suns, they are only exerting like 10% of the gravitational pull of everything that we're seeing. They, therefore, they conclude there must be something big that's unseen or dark that is literally holding a lot of things together that these individual little things could never do in themselves. They're not, there's not enough mass. Do you understand what I mean? There's not enough mass. The, the more mass you have, the more gravity you have. There's not enough mass to be doing what it's doing there for there's something else out there. <laughs> There's something bigger that's at work. All right, so they use this term, and the, the term dark matter is given to that which, um, uh, you know what, I've got, a, I've got a couple of scriptures here. Uh, did I tell you to turn to Colossians 1? Well, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Um, Colossians 1, and we'll start in verse 15. Now, I literally got this quote from a ph physicist I was reading. He says, dark matter is what gave us our start in life. That, it's, that it holds everything together. That what these individual sons cannot, do not have enough gravitation to do this unseen force <laughs> which is we know to be the Lord I mean a, a picture of the Lord this unseen force literally is holding it all together all right Colossians 1 verse 15 speaking of Jesus who is the image of the invisible God okay well that's given us a clue right there dark matter is totally invisible who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by, by him all things consist. Um, in the Greek there, the words by him all things consist, if you look it up, it will say, the literal Greek is, by him all things are held together. Okay. So, this dark matter was the primordial beginning matter that, that before everything started expanding, and I'll explain that in a minute, that everything was held at a certain place for a certain amount of, you know, let's just say a billion years for the fun of it, but it was held 
as a family together until a certain juncture, okay? Um, let's read a few more scriptures just for the fun of it. I mean, it's always good to get in the Word of God, amen? Ephesians 4. And uh, verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now there are several notable things here, um, may grow up into him in all things. And true spiritual growth is not that you learn how to pray or you know, learn how to counsel. Okay, you can, learn, you can learn that in this college over here or something, you know. True spiritual growth is to whatever degree you're growing up in him. However much increase of Christ there is and that, that the, the growth is into him and into union with him, and out of a separatist fermion mentality. Then it says, uh, from whom the whole body fitly joined together. So here uh, you're getting sort of a picture of dark matter. From this dark matter, and of course, like, you know, you go, well, dark matter, that's not a very good name for Jesus. Well, you think physicists know how to name stuff, you know, that's really going to be the best name or something like that. Um, but it is invisible. It is unknown. It is at work. It is holding because let's, let's, let's face it. Wouldn't it make sense that instead of just the gravitational pull of all the individual objects being the thing that holds it all together, wouldn't it make sense that there was an invisible force, a greater force than all of it put together? Do I need to say that again? Are you listening? Are you bored? Um, wouldn't it make sense in the Lord that instead of everything being held together by these individual objects' gravitational pull, the result of a bunch of individuals, that actually it's all held together by an invisible force that they call dark matter that is greater than all of them put together and all the force that they could possibly exert on their own. And the answer would be, well, yeah, that would make absolute, that would line up with for by him and for him and to him and through him are all things and by him all things consist, whether they be visible or invisible. Yes. I'm sorry, say it a little louder. Good. Right. So she said that, you know, it's not the universe being billions of individuals that are holding it all together, but that there is, and you know, the one unifying force is Christ, but it is the oneness with Christ. You do understand that. It's not just Christ generically. You know, you go to the pharmacist and say, I need uh, so-and-so medicine, give me the generic version. The generic Jesus never did anything for anybody. It's the Jesus that made you one with him that d has done it all. <laughs> you know, stop taking the generic version and take the real deal. It's free. <laughs> All right. All right. Um. All right. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna read a few things that I thought were interesting from a couple of different physicists that started talking about dark energy. Now, dark matter represents the Lord, but dark energy is going to represent that which is causing things to pull away from one another, similar to fermions. You understand? That's why I brought this in right now, so that you could make the leap. It's just a different, uh, it's astro instead of quantum physics we're talking about now, but the principle is the same. 
Why would the principle be the same? Because it's all about Christ. Because by him and for him and to him are all things. Okay? So dark matter represents Christ holding all things together. Dark energy is a force that is trying to move everything away from the family. Now this is, I, I'm actually going to read some actual uh, physicist stuff here. At a certain point in time, the rate of expansion of the universe picked up. Well, God always was, right? But at a certain juncture, the, the, the enemy fell. Lucifer became Satan. He became the devil, right? We don't know when that was. Was that before creation? Well, yes, but before the seen known creation that we that we know in our daily lives because the first example that we get in Genesis is daily living life the devil shows up but according to flat out science I mean the universe has been around for billions of years Did he fall before that? Well, it, I, I don't know. I mean, it sa the scriptures say in, what is it, Ezekiel 28, that thou walked among the stones of fire and da-da-da-da. I mean, there are, there are many reasons to believe that he might have been around and then fell later, okay? <clears throat> that's not a, I'm not going to argue that point. Or that's not really that big a deal. I'm just trying to suggest a few things. This says, at a certain point in time, the rate of expansion of the universe picked up. And they say it's due to this, well, a newcomer showed up. I, I'm literally, I'm not making this up. This is what the physicists said. A newcomer showed up, dark energy. <laughs> okay? It is causing everything to move apart. Again, I'm just reading stuff out of a physics book that I, I got. I thought, dude. In fact, I said, when I read it, I went, dude. And then I went, dude. And then I went, Deuteronomy. <laughs> but anyway, that's. Um, um, it accounts, this is called dark energy. It accounts for three-fourths of the energy of the universe. Okay, that's a lot of activity. <laughs> Look around you. Look at the world. Three-fourths of the energy is not the sun. It's dark energy. It's the enemy at work in us or our fallen state as a result of the enemy or whatever. But it is in the energy of that which is separating, keeping at arm's length, pulling apart, dividing you know, the church started out as just the body of Christ and then it ended up 18 million denominations. How do you think that happened? Because of dark matter? No, dark matter pulls us together, holds us together. Dark energy is driving things further and further apart, but it is not just the result of each one of those things moving away they are connected to dark energy. And as he expands away, they're expanding away. It's almost like union. And the truth is, Jesus said, you are of, you are of your father, the devil. Okay? And if it's not Christ, you say, no, my father ain't the devil. Well, if, if, if you have not been born again by virtue of the life of the Son, God is not your Father. You just join a church or do something like that. That's not it. And a lot of people have been born again, but they do not. Here we go, fermions. They're the same exact as bosons in their substance. They just treat one another differently. Okay? There are people who are born again who are still ruled by, if, if, not, if you didn't say ruled by the devil, you can say ruled by the world system, right? The, the system, the world system. 
well, who is the prince of this world? What did the scriptures say? The devil. The devil. Three-fourths of the energy at work is the result of dark energy. Does that make sense? Well, it doesn't make sense to me, but it makes sense. And in, in, if you look at the reality of the situation, how few are motivated by Christ? How few take up the cross and follow Jesus? A lot of people are following Jesus. Very few have taken up the cross. He didn't say follow me. The first, bef long before he said follow me, he said take up the cross, deny yourself, you know, all the things that we don't like about this place. Well, you know, if those people that didn't like this place, they wouldn't have liked Jesus in his day. Did you know? I mean, it's just absolute. I'm not, I'm just saying, if the very things that drive them away, because they're fermion, from this place, they would be driven away from Christ because Jesus is the one who said, he didn't say, follow me. He said, take up your cross. Then before he said, follow me, he said, deny yourself. You got to get all these things under your belt. Then follow me. Well, um, that doesn't scare me. Maybe it used to somewhat. I mean, I think it did somewhat. But my love for the Lord, my desire for the Lord, pressed me past my fears. And I'm glad. <laughs> because now I'm not motivated by my love for the Lord, but his love at work in me. Because, because something happens. But you have to do something, and then he begins to act through a certain thing. But there has to be a heart. When the heart turns to the Lord, then, you see what I mean? There, there is a give and take in this. But you don't do the whole work. You turn to him, then he does the work. I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? It's not a, you know, it's, we make it so hard. We, you know, somebody says, take up the cross and follow me and you say well I, I can't I can't well just pick the thing up say no to yourself and after following Jesus for a while you'll not only be carrying that thing you'll be dying on it and Christ will be living through you and it won't be any big deal it won't be hard my yoke is easy my burden is light well I'm glad yours is Jesus you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's kind of, I mean, I don't know if y'all ever react that way. Most of y'all are more spiritual than I am. But, I mean, that's, you know, he's a, you know, my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, I'm glad yours is because this stuff is hard. And what, what, would, what, would his, what would the father's reply be? Well, of course it is. Only Jesus can carry this. And what would my reply be? Well, I know that. Where is he? When's he going to show up? Well, as soon as you stop yelling. <laughs> no. But I mean, you know, if you continue in the Lord, you shall know the truth. He didn't say go 50 paces and if you're tired, stop, throw a fit and lay down and say, I ain't going any further. I mean, I, I, even when I was first born again, man, I knew I've got to, Jesus is the right thing. Uh, you know, I, I know this thing may kill me. I remember, you know, just saying, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And if it gets hard, you know, then I'm going to go through that hardness of all of that. I'm going to, even if it slows me down and the, 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 the you know, the jungle is scratching and tearing at my flesh and then I break out into the desert and I fall down and I'm crawling on all fours. You know, Jesus, I'm coming after you until you come forth as life. And, and if, I, if I fall down on the ground and I can't move anymore and I, I'm about to die, I'll, be, I'll die pointing to Jesus. You know? I mean, I remember in my heart, I said, that's it. That's how I'm going to be. I'll not stop till Christ is fully formed in me. Well, part of that is you, and part of that is the grace that he gives you. But the part that's you will actually disappear when you finally 
get to that cross. It's almost like you're trying to get, you know, you're way over here and you're trying to get to the cross. You're going through the jungle. You're going through the desert and everything. But if you get to that cross, all that you went through, all of it that you suffered, all that will not be remembered. The old things will not be remembered anymore. There will be a resurrection and that resurrection will be the life of Christ. It won't be a glorious day. And maybe it will be a glorious day, but your resurrection is not going to be a glorious day. Your resurrection is going to be Christ. And then you, you won't go, I'm so holy for going through all of this. You will not remember you anymore. It will be Christ raised in you and all power and all commitment and all everything else will be Christ and then you won't, and then he that glorieth, he'll glory in the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you'll tell me what scripture, because I have a list that I'm going to read. Uh, not really. That, I don't, I'm just joking. Go ahead. Maybe you would like to get closer to a mic somewhere. Does she have a mic close to her? Get the wireless Um. Why don't you just, why don't you come up here and read it? Okay, here it goes. Ephesians chapter 2. You, and this is um, talking about, I what I believe is talking about dark energy. You, however, were deprived of life, involved in transgressions and contradiction of his law, in sins and errors, living merely as members of an age, a universe not under God, but under a power working invisibly in the air as ruler of the world by means of a spirit, a leaven that handles the minds and souls of those who exist in disobedience. In this condition which you shared with the rest of the blind world, a condition to which are attached all the desires of the flesh, motions of the will, and of the thoughts, belonging not to the children of God, but children of the wrath of God, denizens of a misbegotten state. That's good. That's good stuff. My daddy wrote that. All right. Um, Let me, let me read a few more things on dark energy here, and then uh, I'll, we'll go through a couple of scriptures also. This is a direct quote now. It's especially strange that dark energy emerged around the same time as stars, or they call it stars, but they're suns. Do you know it's the same? I mean, I'm saying S-O-N-S, but it's suns, sons of God. It's especially strange that dark energy emerged around the same time as suns and galaxy formations hit its stride. It was the gathering of suns that started coming together to form galaxies. Around the time that dark matter, which represents Christ, had held everything together and was drawing it together into galaxies, around the time that they started forming up and stars began to not just be individual entities, but these suns began to form galaxies or gatherings of suns. When it hit its stride, suspiciously fortuitous timing that cosmetologists call the cosmic coincidence. Did I say cosmetologist? They might as well be. <laughs> they call it the cosmic coincidence because it was suspiciously fortuitous. <laughs> but isn't it interesting? Isn't it incredible that the time in time when suns started forming together, forming bodies, started coming together as one, started gathering together, that dark energy appears and starts trying to pull it all apart and send it all in different directions. Hmm, well, guess what? 
That happens in cities when pastors try to get together. The enemy will hit it and try to bust it to pieces. That happens when churches try to come together. It is suspiciously fortuitous. Hmm. I don't know if fortuitous is the right word. Oh, I'm sorry. They, he said suspiciously fortuitous timing. Uh, the cosmic coincidence. And I thought it was great. It says about the same time as the gathering of suns hit its stride, this is when it happened. It's just, just incredible. All right. Um, well, let me read one more statement, then we'll look at a few scriptures. Dark energy pulls galaxies apart before they have a chance to assemble. Before there can be a greater assembly of suns, it'll pull galaxies apart. And that's my little picture of the rubber band here. It is sending them farther and farther apart. All right. It's funny, too. They say there is no center of the universe. Did you know that? that's, that's common? There's no center of the universe. Hmm. But if the Big Bang Theory is, is true, which uh, Stephen Hawking's proved it, you know, the guy in the wheelchair that talks to it, he proved that, that there was a Big Bang Theory. If, if there was a Big Bang yeah, it was, I, I really appreciate that. He, he gave me a, a, a DVD that was just so enjoyable. It was tasty. Um, anyway, um, then the center of the universe would be where the Big Bang happened and everything went like that, right? Some people say, well, there couldn't be a Big Bang and God created everything. And we've discussed this already, folks. God could have created everything with a Big Bang. We're so, we're so narrow. We're so narrow. All right, let's read a few scriptures. How much time do I have left? Okay, because it's getting late up there, but I, and I've got a meeting right after this. But 1 Corinthians, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll just read these scriptures, and I will do my best not to comment. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And verse 13. Ready? Is Christ divided? <laughs> Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? All right, so the first, first three words in that verse is, is Christ divided? Verse 13. All right. That... This expansion, this dividing, this separation, this movement apart does not represent the life of the Lord. It does not represent what ultimately he is trying to bring about. Now, God uses all things. Don't you ever believe he doesn't? God uses the devil hanging him on a cross. Okay. But that doesn't mean it's God. It's used of God. I mean, there's a difference between God and what God uses. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, book of Acts, and the rest of them will be in the book of Acts. So if you find it, you should settle in. Acts 13. Acts 13 and verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Okay. So I want, I, I, I'm going to do this a little bit, but you ought to do it someday. You ought to go through the book of Acts and follow Paul and Silas and Paul and Barnabas and read every account and don't read it with your rose-colored glasses of, oh, this I would love to be an evangelist or a missionary. Da, da, da. Read it the way it says it and what, what you just saw, verse 44, everybody coming together, verse 45, the enemy hitting it, 
contradicting and blaspheming and attacking, guess what? If you'll go through Acts and you'll, you'll look real carefully every place they go, my God, every time they feel like this, this you know, thing's going to get off the ground, terrible things happen. Okay? All right, because there may be dark matter at work trying to join us together, but there's also dark energy at work trying to divide us up. Okay? And, you know, just uh, most of you who have been here a while know that. Some of you new folks, just a little warning. Just a little warning. Dark energy will be at work trying to divide us. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Okay. Um, Verse uh, uh, 48, same chapter, Acts 13. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Verse 49, and the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Verse 50, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their borders. Now this is a... This is a bunch of people getting hold of this and excited about it. And they literally cast them out of their city. You know, I mean, don't read the, don't read the Bible with rose-colored glasses. Read it the way it is, you know. And you'll be more founded, if you will. Okay, let's go to Acts 17. And we'll read some verses out of Acts 17, and then we'll quit. I'll leave the rest of Acts to you. We skipped a whole bunch that was in between what we read here. But Acts 17, and let's look, start with verse 4 and 5. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. But the Jews, who believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain vile fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city in an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. All right, so <laughs> um, I've often wondered when I read this, this says uh, certain devout, honorable people believed, and uh, many of the the women, uh, chief women, which is just the opposite of what happened in chapter 13 where they stirred up the women and the devout, the, the, uh, the city officials. So I'm wondering, did Paul go and say, okay, we'll reverse this trend. We'll go reach these, we'll go reach out to the women and to the city officials. You can't start, stop dark energy. If, it won't, if, if, if you reach these people, it'll find these over here. And then it's got, it can always fall back on uh, um, uh, certain vile fellows of the baser sort. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> I mean, uh, dark energy wants to look respectable. So it wants the, it wants the, the women, uh, the chief women, or it wants the city officials or whatever. But if it can't get them, it'll resort to, you know, vile people of the baser sort. Uh, and then let's just finish with verse uh, 11 through 13. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of the honorable women who were Greeks and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the people. Now, that's just something. That's just something. When there, it's like they don't have anything better to do than to, than to follow, you know, uh, to get on Facebook and read where Paul's going to be next. Now, I don't have that problem because I'm not on Facebook because I will remain faceless. <laughs> but but uh, honestly, that's one reason why I'm not on. That's why only in my newsletter will you know where I'm going to be. I don't, I mean, 
next week I'm going to be somewhere. I might have told you the state. Maybe. And people go, well, you know, you need to tell, you know, everybody where you're going to be. Well, you know, some of the people found out that you're there, but when the Jews of Thessalonica, they're not even in Berea. They're from another city, but when they had knowledge that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there and also stirred up the people. Okay, the only hope for the people of Thessalonica is what? What? Somebody? What? Yeah. What? Officially from the scripture. They searched the scriptures daily to find out what they were being taught were true. Remember, let's read it again then. Um, verse um, uh, 11. There, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. No kidding. It was the guys in Thessalonica that heard that, that he was here and came and caused trouble. These were more noble, but why? Because they were special. They had a special heart. They were precious in the sight of the Lord. Well, you know, all God's children are precious in the sight of the Lord, if you go by that song. Uh, but this says... They were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, that's number one, and searched the scriptures how often? Once a month. Once a year. No, what does it say? Daily, whether those things were so. What do I tell you? I tell you to be Bereans. I tell you to search the scriptures. Don't listen to me. Don't go by what I say. And And... You will build a nobility in the Lord. Boy, I never shared on that. The Lord shared with me about a year ago on what true nobility was. This is the door to true nobility. You know, maybe you're not born in the line of kings and queens and whatever. But in this, there is a nobility that you, you can never attain to by your bloodline. And so, but when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the people. Stirred up the people. Okay. Dark matter is like Paul and Silas or Paul and Barnabas. It is the Lord at work in these bodies. It is the Lord at work in these objects. It is the Lord at work in these sons of God. And he is drawing them together like the bosons. But now we're talking, that's quantum physics. Now we're talking astrophysics, same principle, just on a larger scale. And he's... He's using them, and he's using that matter, that, that, that being that is Christ, not just, um, not just powerful preaching. You have to recognize that by him all things consist. How does that church stay together? You know, people say that about us. How in the world they have been battered and beaten and slapped and Hated and spear shoved. How are they still together? I mean, how many years? How many years has this church been going? Twenty-seven, twenty-eight years. You know, a lot of churches aren't haven't been around that long. Especially like you know, not big denominational individual church. They don't. They don't last. Usually seven years. That's the the norm. Thirty seven. Well, Berean that I graduated from, seven years. Shiloh that I was assistant pastor under J.W. Lemon, seven? New creation, 37? That, 27, 27, sorry. 27, that doesn't even make sense. Doesn't even make sense. Oh, but it's not about making sense, is it? It's about Christ. If it's not I, but Christ, if it's not you, but Christ, 
we will be held together. It doesn't matter what comes and it really doesn't matter what comes and goes. We will be held together by a force greater than us. And may we make sure that he gets the glory. <laughs> may we, may we make sure that he gets the glory. All right, we're going to close. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your son. He does get the glory. We are nothing. We are objects held in place by this dark matter, this reality that is Christ. And though dark energy has assailed us and has pulled some out, we have remained steady because of your Son. Father, these aren't just theorems and theological thoughts to us here. They are living reality. They are saving grace. They are the wonder of all wonders that Jesus is all things to us, and we claim nothing. Jesus, we love you. We love you with all of our heart. We ask you to continue to shine your glorious face into our hearts and that we may conform more and more to your image and in your name. Amen. We're dismissed. And as soon as they get through, I'll meet with...